Imagine you've just bought your perfect villa, you have fulfilled your dream, but you just need the right luxury car in front of your new home. Well, then you think Audi, BMW, Mercedes, Audi A8, BMW 7 Series, Mercedes S-Class, maybe Lexus LS, or something different like the Genesis G90. And you have to decide, do you go for the long wheelbase version or the short wheelbase version? Either way, Genesis are the underdogs. If you also think about in sales figures, Mercedes and BMW in 2022, around 2 million. Audi 1.6 million, Lexus around 600,000 worldwide and Genesis around 200,000. And at the moment they are especially strong on the home market in Korea. But with this Genesis G90, they especially want to attack now the European market to show Audi, BMW and Mercedes, here we are. Does it work? How good is it? How comfortable is it? How much space and how much comfort is there in the rear for the executive seating? We'll find out here with Thomas Nautigefühl in 4K, full screen, full length. Let's go with the front. And you can see here with the front grille and these really slim headlamps, daytime running light is on at the moment. It kind of resembles a little bit the Genesis logo with the wings on the exterior. This one here being the long wheelbase version has more chrome accentuations in the lower part already. There will be a difference then to the short wheelbase version I'm also going to show you. Let me show you something very interesting now with the lights. When I switch through the different modes, this one here at the moment is the daytime running light. And you might ask yourself, where is the main headlamp unit? This is now the main light. Daytime running light, main light. Interesting, right? And then this is the high beam of, and here again, the differences. This is very peculiar, isn't it? And turning indicators. Take a look at that. There we go. So this looks also very interesting, right? But the even more interesting part is, look at that, how it's drawn here also at the side. The length here is 5 meters 47 or 215 inches for the long wheelbase version. And that is a very interesting approach because if we just think about the competitors, short wheelbase version of the G90, length and wheelbase ways, in between there's S-Class and 7 Series. And then there's the long wheelbase version, which is longer in length and the wheelbase than 7 Series and the S-Class. This one here in wheelbase and length compared to the S-Class Maybach version, actually. Wheels here in 20 inch, this is rather close design. And at the B-pillar we have a lot of chrome use here for the long wheelbase version. More this very traditional, rather conservative look, whereas the short wheelbase version looks more modern. Towards the rear, I think a really striking light signature here. Rear axis steering you get as well, 4 degrees, the rear wheels can turn in the opposite direction than the front wheels, faking a shorter wheelbase, available for the short wheelbase and the long wheelbase version. Also adaptive air suspension here is then standard. But <whistles> Auto Cool Fake Exhaust Police is on service for you. Yeah, even the Genesis can't hide from that. <laughs> here, look at that. The outside tip, of course, is kind of exaggerating the real exhaust on the inside. Turning indicators or the headlight lights in the rear, very impressive too, with this dual horizontal scheme. So everything they did with lights here looks really impressive. What do you think? Do you like the overall design of this one? Also, in comparison to Audi A8, Lexus LS, BMW 7 Series or Mercedes S-Class, tell me in the comments. And this is here the short wheelbase version at 5 meters 28 or 208 inches. Visually from the outside, next to that, this is here a different color, the white, and it's also a matte paint, so that looks really striking. Here in the lower front, some differences. So here you do not have these extreme chrome accentuations. I would say a little bit sportier look here in the front for the short wheelbase version. Also in the side profile, less chrome for the short wheelbase version here with the blacked out B-pillar. Once again, I think this one definitely looks cooler, both with the shorter proportions and also with this sportier somewhat look, but still of course really classy and elegant. Wheelbase and length here both 19 centimeters or seven and a half inches shorter. And from the rear, both versions are pretty much alike visually. Yeah, I really love this matte, like white vehicle color and also the short wheelbase version, at least from the looks from the outside. But there will be difference, of course, in the interior, in the rear. This is the car key that also fits to the exterior color. Cool, right? 
so pretty light but i like the structure also here and when i open the vehicle here door hands fold out and they also make a nice sound there we go and then door closing sound first of all i slam it it's hardly possible to slam it actually but that sounds really nice but in this case then the sense of the vehicle is that you have the soft close there we go and you also see when you open it like this it uh, there we go it comes a little bit towards you at the same time i found these electric doors always a little bit complicated because then they are kind of heavy to open if you don't use the mechanism and so on so it just adds some more complex things to everything and then you have these touch sensors on the exterior you hold your finger there and then it closes that's actually a quite nice idea but you really have to touch it actually also to close the door there are different things i can sh soon show that to you first of all it's very interesting inlet here also with the structure on the inside different deco elements are available there's even one available where they use old newspaper to create a wooden atmosphere but not cut new trees. But then again, the seats are animal skin only. Hmm, I don't get it. So BMW, for example, meanwhile offers also in the luxury segment alternatives to animal skin. So everyone that is interested in animal welfare and so on. Um, but here they don't have any alternative yet. That's sad. However, the comfort of the seats from the seat ergonomics is actually quite good and also comparable to the other luxury vehicles. With 189 or 6 for 2, there's still a lot of headroom left. And now about the door closing thing. Here I can either press this button here, then the door is closing, or I can also activate this function in the infotainment system. We know it from Tesla, who have introduced that here when I put my foot on the brake. There we go and also a separate button for the seat massage straight forward. Welcome to this front interior. I feel they have found a good mix between offering modern stuff at the same time going for a classic user interface. For example, with a manual climate unit, you have this knurling on top and lower part and here that's the easy way you can control the climate temperature. So the user interface I really found way better than with the Germans. Also, you still have this lower control turning knob where you can control the infotainment system, fingerprint sensor, easy buttons for seat cooling, seat heating in the middle console, this an inductive charging pad. And I also have some buttons here to close the doors so it doesn't work to open it, but when I open it like here, I can also press it on the middle console and then the door is closing. Underneath here, there's I think this split armrest where you also connect your smartphone. Ooh, and I really love this high floor mat. Interior cockpit overview, really clean. And once again, what a relief. Manual volume control on the steering wheel, real buttons here also for the cruise control and so on. And once again, the real climate unit, just the vent strength is controlled here in this touchscreen, but that is still for that solution straightforward. Also for the heated steering wheel and so on. I just love this straight user interface here. In the front, by the way, this small hole for the cup holes. Here also when you slide open or close something, really good build quality and two times 12.3 inch screens. Oh, look at that. We also have the front camera screen there in the digital instruments. Also have a head-up display available. Very unusual here is this manual control so a real button and really huge in the whole dashboard for the brightness of the instruments so you can see here how prominent it has been placed the infotainment system really important if you forgot how your car looks from the outside here 360 degree view then you can take a look at the vehicle from the inside well it looks spectacular <laughs> But I don't see any reason why I would do that, actually. What do you think? But it looks fancy, definitely. Here it is actually touchscreen or control from below. Both is possible. Apple CarPlay integration, really nice using all the way, all the screen. And with Auto is, of course, also possible. And this is here the integrated map. Yeah, I mean, it is also somewhat usable. Here, by the way, we are in the Faro region at the Algarve in Portugal. And 23 speakers, Bang & Olufsen sound system. If you start the vehicle and start the music, then we go here 
Ooh, these ones turn up. Well, sound quality is excellent. Yes, I like that. They also have an interesting drive mode selector like this. So we know it originally from Jaguar Land Rover, for example. So you just turn it and then press for P. But I think it's very cool. Actually, also feels really nice how you turn it. Ambient lighting at the inside of the doors. Here, for example, also in the rear. And you can also adjust the colors. Rear seating, now it gets really interesting. This here, the long wheelbase version, you see that really long door. At the inside of the door, you also have a separate small cubby hole here. You actually open with a separate button. And what I also once again appreciate here, one press, the shake goes down, and then I press, the window goes down. And if you remember the new 7 series where you control that in a separate screen and so on, why so complicated? This is the best solution. The S-Class also still has this logic and I think it's just making sense. Then here also on the inside you have the seat massage button for the rear seats for example. This is the fold flat function. This is then to go upright again and memory seating. And I start here behind the driver because when I'm driving this is the legroom I still have here in the long wheelbase. So really a lot. And the headroom here with 189 or 6 for 2 still some left although it's getting a little bit closer. Separate shade for the rear. You open that from the middle console. There we go. And now I moved over to the being chauffeured position, which is the most crucial thing, especially about the long wheelbase version. Let's begin here at the top. So as for the storage, press this top one. This one, for example, there's the ski hatch hidden. Then this middle console here. So the long wheelbase version is always a four-seater. The short wheelbase version is available as four-seater or five-seater, also with a through bench where you can actually fold this thing up or down. But this one here is always fixed down. And then you have this turning knob here, which is controlling the screens left and right. So let me activate them. There we go. I always feel that wouldn't people just use their own iPads here in the rear? Because there you can, for example, show and control something of the vehicle. But then to get your own things on there, maybe like your streaming platforms, I think it's just more useful to put just your own iPad there, isn't it? Or what do you think about this? So in this central screen here, I can, for example, activate seat heating or seat cooling for the rear seats, also the climate and so on. But there's also the massage details. So I can activate it here or I can also activate it at the inside of the doors with the button. And here then I can decide which area of the body I want to have the massage on. Oh, and that really feels very nicely. Here, by the way, I will soon be able to activate the footrest massage. And now, ta-da! I'll press this one button, the rest button. And then you can see here the passenger seat which does not have a massage function by the way moves forward so they think either you have driver massage or then massage for the rear seats that's the concept for this vehicle here it moves forward also goes in the front like this and this part here is actually then for your feet remember this is the long wheelbase version so there is not much more legroom you can possibly get actually this is also way longer as for the footrest if we compare it to the S-Class. So a very, very long footrest here also with the microfiber cover. You can see here, even with my long legs, I do not even touch the front seat here. Then this part is going up and wow, this is such a great comfortable position. And if we compare the competitors, I have never had so much leg room here with this folding flat position yet. Wow. And then this microfiber cushion here on the top that's really awesome as for the comfort it's so long that when i activate the footrest massage here like here now this this area here goes i'm not sure if you can actually see that on camera but here these areas here they go up and down and you see it here when i put my hand on it here this here this like this air cushion now here in the lower part and so for that I mean, this is really first world problem, right? So I now have to move the seat a little bit towards me. Let's see, uh, maybe like this. And then I have to move up my, uh, how does it work? Uh, yeah, now these are the problems a uh, luxury car owner have when they are actually having two, yeah, there we go. 
two long vehicles. So now I move the leg rest up again. There we go. And now I have the perfect position for my size that I have the feet massage. At the same time, everything is upright here. That's perfect. And these here are the individual seat controls for the rear seats. And now Leah shows us some more features of the vehicle. First of all, there is the separate mirror for the back passengers, also with integrated light. And under the armrest, you can see these kind of, they look like lights, you know. So this is for UVC radiation. You can also turn it on. So why would they offer that? This is intended for disinfection, for example, of smartphones or purse or whatever. Yeah, but at the same time, UVC rays are also hazardous for the skin and also for your eyes. It also says here in the warning that you should always turn it off when you're not using it. Um, yeah, and of course, it's supposed to turn off also when you open this case here. But I mean, there are always these UVC rays then in there. So I'm a little bit skeptical about these systems and I think they should not be used unless you have a really controlled environment and then you can, you know, um, maybe let some time pass before people enter the room or the car and so on. I mean, I'm not an expert on this topic. Maybe, you know, maybe you are and can tell me more about UVC rays if you're like an expert in that field here. But I think it's maybe a little bit of paranoia rather than being very helpful or useful. Or what do you think? Interior of the short wheelbase version. In the front here, we do have a different interior as for the color, but that is not connected to the long wheelbase or the short wheelbase. So in the front, everything is more or less the same just that we have here then a black interior. But then the difference will be for the rear doors. So here we are. It's like you are the one being chauffeured. Here we go. You can already see there is less space in the rear, but still a lot of space left, no doubt about that. But the big difference is then in the chauffeur mode, what will be the difference in the leg room? So here I also activate this chauffeur mode. The front seat goes in the front. So this is possible both in short and long wheelbase versions. And remember also the competition, the Audi A8L, I could fully stretch my legs. Then in the Mercedes S-Class, even in the long wheelbase version that is standard in the US, it's not really possible. I really need the Maybach version with my height uh, in the, in the S-Class and the BMW 7 Series in the new generation was no problem. Here, that's now the short wheelbase version. Remember, in the long wheelbase version, it was no problem at all. I had more than enough space for my legs, even fully stretched. And here you see, it works, yes, but it is not the ideal position, I would say, you know. So uh, with the other one, I can really adjust, uh, but just talking a very high level here now. So it works as for the length, but the way my legs are being put is not the most ideal if we compare it to the other version. But you see, even in the short wheelbase version, it is enough for the length, even for tall people. But the long wheelbase version is definitely the ultimate thing you can get if you want to have this full flat position. You can also activate the foot massage in this one, in the short wheelbase. The only real difference is that you have this 19 centimeters or seven and a half inches more room really as for the leg room. Taking a look at the trunk or the boot, we also pay attention to the opening and closing sounds of the vehicle. First of all, there's this small button I can press, well integrated. It does, and let's listen to the closing sound. Whereas the airplane above us is ruining my shot. Now we can hear it. <laughs> so let's listen to that. Well, I mean like this electric sounds not, but like the moment it closes, it sounds pretty premium, doesn't it? And now at the space, 370 liters it is, and length is about 115 in meters or 45 inches. The width is just here a meter or 40 inches. It's narrower the more you get inside. And the only thing you can do, you can use this ski hatch there for some load through. Here, it's not only interesting what's under the hood, but also the hood itself. 2.6 square meters, this clamshell hood is the 
biggest piece of this kind, all from aluminum, but actually the biggest in the whole industry. They wanted to reduce the gaps and so on, and so they make everything that it covers, everything just above the headlamps. Very impressive. 3.5 liter V6 twin turbo with electric supercharger they use here. This is the mild hybrid version with 415 horsepower. Some markets also employ a 380 horsepower version without mild hybrid. And then the base would be rear wheel drive. However, in Europe you always get the all wheel drive version. It is one on demand, so it's mainly rear wheel driven. And then on demand, power is also sent to the front wheels. Acceleration figures 5.4 seconds here for the long wheelbase version, 5.2 for the short wheelbase. Welcome to Thomas's driving lounge. No, not standing still lounge. But what I want to show you is the ultimate discipline for a luxury car, a speed bump right in front of us. Let's go. Ah, beautiful. Mm, very good. Because the thing that the German premium manufacturers always have is suspension, you know, comfort, sportiness, both combined, super smooth when you're driving over bumps and so on. And quite often, also the Genesis, the other cars, like G80, GV80, we tested so far, was, hey, yeah, great luxury cars, great premium cars, but suspension was not like, was good, but not equal. Mm, but here, when we're driving over these speed bumps here, in this rather rural neighborhood with a lot of villas and so on, wow, this is mastered very, very well. So if we would just close our eyes, oh, there's another one, G90. <laughs> so, ah, there's actually you are happy to see the next speed bump. Ah, oh, super smooth. I love that. What do you think, Leah? She's making fun of me. She's making fun of me. It's like, yes, I'm a car nerd. I admit, I admit. Yeah, she's like, you know, okay, let him talk. It's like his car BS and like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's the next speed bump. Wow, oh my you, god. You hardly even feel that, you know. Yeah, yeah yes, there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there are more fierce speed bumps out there, definitely, but this is mastered very, very well. So if I would close my eyes now, which I obviously should not do, I could not say like, um, you know, this is any, any product that is standing behind the other, you know, established premium or luxury manufacturers. This, it is actually not, it's not, not too, uh, not too shallow, but yeah really convinced of that suspension already right now here at the moment at lower speeds already super silent although the road is wet and you always hear more noise from the tires and so on but it's super silent in here and i don't even feel i would have to decrease my speed when i'm going over these bumps which is not the intention of these bumps the intention is to reduce your speed but here you feel like oh, you know i'm i'm cruising over the bump anyway it also has this uh, foresight with the camera that the suspension acts accordingly. It's an adaptive air suspension. Then you have the rear axis steering. Should we just, just, you know, one circle here? So when we're at lower speed, I feel that the rear axis steering, I can also see it when I'm looking to the side mirror. It's a beautiful villa that there. You see it next time around. So you see air suspension. Oh, it, the, the guys behind me say, like, what is this guy doing? Why is he doing two thir circles in the roundabout? So the rear axis steering you feel, especially here at lower speeds, it fakes a shorter wheelbase. You almost feel like the, the rear is kind of fishtailing. That's what you feel. Yes, it is some kind of artificial feel, but it helps so much, especially if you have here, which we're driving, the long wheelbase version that you can enjoy the space in the rear. But at the same time, you don't have much compromise in driving, for example. So good that we have all the suspension tech we need. We have the rear axle steering tech we need. Yeah, and then the seats, as for the ergonomics, they also offer good comfort. Here, I definitely feel that the BMW is on top of the game. Meanwhile, because of the Einsitzhöhe, listen and repeat, Einsitzhöhe, German lesson for today. If you haven't had that one in luxury car review here at Autogefühl, the Einsatzhöhe is like the, um, you know, like the first bolstering part of the seat where you kind of sink into. And that is with best like with the new BMW sensor fin seats, like this high grade leather red and then also underneath softest surface plus the softest lower bolstering that is best with BMW. Here I feel equal with Mercedes, um, I think, 
overall. The question is also, does it come close to Audi, BMW, Mercedes, Lexus, or is it something on its own? I mean, all of these high-end products, of course, are somewhat than similar in their features and length and so on and, and weight. Yes, there are differences here and there and from the cockpit layout. Here, definitely what's standing out is that the user interface is the best one. I think together with the Audi, that is also pretty simple, easy, straightforward. But here, you know, I can easily fine-tune the climate and so on and I don't feel overwhelmed. There is not this situation where it's like, ah, wait a minute, what do I want to do now? And where do I do it? And I have these situations more and more in the new German cars. And that's what I love about this setup here, definitely. I also have this front view camera here at lower speeds, uh, especially which I can use more when parking in and out. If I would also need it while driving quicker, I don't think so. It also shows like assistance systems view and so on. It looks spectacular. Yeah, maybe not the most necessary system overall. That's a really good question which brand it, like from the driving feeling, it comes closest to. And mm, I mean, it doesn't convey like this feeling of I want to drive sporty, which the Audi and the BMW does, I feel. So that is Tesla. And there, there yeah. that's the, yeah. <laughs> Good observation, that's new uh, new 7 Series, definitely. Yeah, it's a good luxury tour here <laughs> for, for us today. And of, of course, also this environment here um, near Faro. Uh, I think out here. There we go. Yeah, it, it all doesn't feel that long, you know. So I feel that in the driving characteristic, it comes closest to the Mercedes S-Class. I would, I would, what do you think? You agree? So true, yeah. ah. Oh, look, at the, that's the hotel we've been with, uh, you know, a couple of driving events with BMW. Mm. They had their cars there and, uh, yeah, yeah. Good, good memories here in the, in the area. Uh, we, I think we, I did the 7 Series facelift of the previous generation here. That's, yeah, you can check out that review that looked, looked pretty cool also. Yeah, so I'm already convinced right now of the driving feeling. I'm super relaxed. Also, what I wanted to test was I was really eager about they use A and C. That's active noise cancellation, you know, like, you know, for me from your headphones in the plane. And usually when manufacturers use that, I feel some kind of a vacuum next to my ear and it's really unpleasant. So it's really silent, but unnaturally silent. And here I feel we have good, um, we're driving the correct speed, by the way. He doesn't, <laughs> just a note. <laughs> so, uh, here, I think it's fine, you know, so it's really silent, plus, like from a passive installation, oh, there's another speed bump, oh, super smooth, great, great, and then the active noise installation, then you have it even more silent, but I don't have this negative vacuum feeling uh, next to my ear, so I think that is very well done. You have better ears than me. What, do you feel that active noise cancellation, or is it, no, it's fine, it's fine for you as well? Okay, and when I'm you know, doing some slalom, how is it for the passenger? It's good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we had the observation that um, sometimes she feels better as a passenger in, you know, when the center of gravity is lower, unless it's a very sporty SUV, like the GLC 63 we had. There I did like crazy cornering and she was fine. So, so we, we still try to find out what causes unpleasant feeling with the passenger. That's also very important uh, to me. Yeah, the thing is you cannot activate the seat massage here. Um, no, no, no seat massage for the passenger seat. So I think we have to switch in the back. Of course, I will eventually switch in the back and Leah will be driving me. But now, of course, after testing suspension, low speed, relaxing and so on, enjoying technology, the big question is how does it perform at higher speeds on the motorway? Performance of this 3.5 degree V6, we go to sport mode and accelerate it out, slightly downhill, so we'll have probably the short wheelbase acceleration with the long wheelbase version. So let's see, let's do some, you know, like some kind of preload. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Plop, that's a hundred. Hmm. Also nice engine sound, actually, so... 
yeah, why not? And it's in that sport mode here, always have always a little bit more RPM and so on. It's actually quite nice. Let's see if we can feel something from its suspension. Now we go a little bit faster here in that roundabout. It's a heavy vehicle. Wow, oh, it's actually nicely done. And that's fun. So here, let's see, sport mode. <laughs> and then combat mode. Yeah, I mean, the, the steering is different, yeah. but suspension also, right? Suspension yeah. in comfort, we shake a little bit more. Sport, we get more feedback. So it's good to have that flexibility, actually. And let's just compare that here when we go in, in comfort mode in this roundabout and accelerate out. Yeah, not, not so much fun. So in the sport mode, definitely big difference. You have more feedback from the whole vehicle. Also, acceleration out works better. But again, it's had really good to have that flexibility. And we're now heading on to the motorway, where we can also then drive a little bit quicker. So here. I love that in, in Portugal, like this sign, like you cannot go on the motorway on foot on bicycle, uh, not on or with the cow, and also with the, you know, like like with a don donkey carriage, you know, like, uh, yeah, great sign to, to enter the, the, the motorway here <laughs> in Portugal. I just love that. Here, when we switch the lane, by the way, you also see there's this additional blind spot monitor camera that shows me in the instruments, left or right, what's next to me. So we take the A22 then here in Portugal. And when we're going, let's first start in the comfort mode as well. Here at around 90 kilometers an hour, so like 50 miles an hour. And it's again, super, super, super silent. So in no way is that worse when with the Germans, maybe even better. You know, using here this active noise cancellation, which only the Maybach does. In the Maybach, however, I felt it was a little bit too much, you know, so I, I felt it's better just with the passive noise cancellation with the S-Class and the Maybach, then the A and C comes on top and kind of, again, has this vacuum effect next to the ear. And some do hear that and find it unpleasant. Some say, whatever, I don't care, um, I find it good. It just depends on, on, on the individual. And the worst, I experienced it, I think, in the Ford Cougar or Ford Escape where I felt like it was unnaturally silent for a compact sport SUV, a compact Ford SUV. And it was also like, you know, really like you're having like, I don't know, like maybe like a, a cup uh, next to your ear or on top of it, um, something like that. Running straight here, again, very comfortable. Suspension is doing a great job. It is rather floaty, as I said. So definitely now when I drive a little bit faster, this driving characteristic is best comparable to a Mercedes S-Class. Again, the Audi A8 and the BMW 7 Series goes more in a sporty direction, I would feel. Everything is set on a very, very relaxed note here already for the driver. The steering input itself, by the way, is, especially in the comfort mode, very soft. At the same time, there is no dead zone area. So I like that when there's always some kind of command transported onto the road. The drive mode sport is a huge difference in the steering characteristics. So I almost feel like uh, no, I think the next oh. this one, yeah, Sorry. yeah, yeah. But the good, it's good <laughs> that we just, yeah. Sometimes, I mean, I think Google Maps is usually quite straightforward, but sometimes, um, yeah. Although it should be really clear, it's sometimes not. You know, and then you know these discussions between drivers and and, and co-drivers. <laughs> Someone is always right. <laughs> yeah. But the, the, the most important thing is that you don't argue. You know, even if someone was wrong, then you just say, ah, you know, sorry, honey, I was wrong. And that's it. You know, I've seen, you know, a lot of fight about directions in the car and um, it's nothing healthy at all. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> so, and you know, in the sport mode, way more feedback from the steering wheel. It's still on the soft note, yes but to me more likable actually from the steering feel. Now let's accelerate a little bit further. We can do some 90 to 120 when we're already at speed. 
Oh, that's it already. Yeah, good response from the engine. I think here also, right size, that we have a six cylinder in there, that they don't even bother with four cylinders, and that's it. Of course, at the end of the test drive, we will also tell you more about the fuel economy here now. 120 kilometers an hour, so like 70 miles an hour. Either in sport mode, or we can also go back to the comfort mode, no problem. The road here is kind of uneven, so here the insulation from the vehicle has to work even more, of course. It's not that windy outside today here. Wind noise is, however, picking up a little bit here. So, when we were driving slower, I felt that this one was even more silent than the Germans. Here now on the motorway, I'm not so sure about that. Hmm. I'm also thinking about buying a professional dB meter. It's always the question of like that you really can compare weather and road conditions and so on, but at least when you drive the same road, you can very well compare it. But here now driving a little bit faster, it's still very well done and very silent, but here maybe, for example, an S-Class has, uh, has a notch over it or something. What would you say? Yeah, from the, yeah. Yeah, it is definitely still very well done, but maybe at higher speeds. I mean, the, the Germans do more testing for higher speeds anyway, because, you know, German Autobahn and no one outside of Germany would drive, you know, like these crazy speeds we drive on the German Autobahn, and that's why the other manufacturers also don't focus so much on it. And fair enough, you also have to spend a lot of money to optimize the car for so much, you know, higher speeds. And for most customers worldwide, it's not really that relevant, we have to say. Still feel really at home here on the motorway. It's great cruising and so on. Let's test the assistance systems here. Setting the distance. Easily done. Oh, what a relief. Straightforward. Then here, blind spot monitor is also inside the side mirror. Then it's also activate the active lane keeping assist just with a press of a button. Let's see how long it drives for itself before warning me. And if I can then deactivate it with a capacitive touch or if it needs a steering movement. So far, it's doing its thing. Of course, that's not how it's meant to be. You have to keep your hands on the seat. Now it does. Oh, this was now just a small press and it realized it was there. But you see, it was also a smooth move movement. So no hectic movements. So also assistance systems wise, everything very elaborated. I'm very impressed with this vehicle. Well done. So yeah, user interface, definitely better than with the Germans. Driving agility, you're rather fine with BMW and Audi. That's also not the focus of this vehicle. The comfort is definitely there. I would wish for animal free materials also in this vehicle. That's what Genesis has not been focusing at all. Actually, one of my biggest criticisms points at the moment. And the only thing I can say still is about the fuel economy. I think we'll drive a little bit further and then give you the final update on that. Well, now I've changed the seating position and I can cite the consumption figures. About 10 liters on one kilometers, 23 mpg US, 28 mpg UK. Leah, please drive me to the next beach. Of course. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, starting here in the normal upright position. What you do feel, especially in the rear, is the rear axle steering that feels kind of artificial, but once again, it is good to have it to just maneuver the vehicle around. That's really cool. Also very comfortable here in the rear, and of course, I can start the seat massage, and once again, I do not have to go into this menu here. Just one press of a button and that's it. Also here to control the shade. Just one press down or up and that's it. Once again, this straightforward user interface is also something you appreciate while not driving because you can always argue, hey, it's even more important for the driver. Yes, but it's also good here if you are a passenger in the rear that everything is just working easily. Just when I want to change the type of seat massage, for example, then I have to use the screen. Yeah, but that's actually also fine. Oh, yeah, the inductive charging pads, they should be cooled. That is also something that this car actually needs, that it's lacking at this moment. Ah, the seat massage is, is really awesome. And 
great for a vehicle and of course even more spectacular when you just by one press of the button click this rest button and then this one goes forward let's see how it feels to drive with this one uh, recently we also showed the, the Lexus LM this luxury van experience there are by the way checked with Lexus you should not drive in the fold flat position um, you know because they have like a completely fold flat position like this um, so it's definitely always better for crash safety if you drive in an upright styling here it's maybe not as bad as in the LM uh, but at the same time, yes, the better crash position will always be when you're more upright, the seatbelt and so on is more, more set on this. Oh, yeah, this is really great. And I have to say, if you then compare the competitors, um, this is also among the best, if not the best. The 7 Series was also great in the rear chauffeur position. That too, yes. The foot massage here is also pretty nice. Um, definitely here in the long wheelbase version I sit way better than in the short wheelbase one because there it did fit from the feet but at the same time it was kind of like a weird position and here I have the best position here you know like all parts of the legs and the angles how they are on this on the on this back part here this is really great the only thing that would be you know like, like let's say more or less annoying is that I have to adjust the seat here a little bit closer to me, then change back to my own seat, and then put the there we go, there we go. Then put this lower rest up again to be then be able to reach the foot massage. Yeah, and this screen here in the rear, so it deactivates itself. There we go, swipe, and then I can activate the foot massage. Oh. Maybe I switch to being chauffeured reviews in the future. I can really enjoy that here. How is it driving the vehicle here? Oh, it's very good. <laughs> yeah, she, she enjoys it. You're doing it very, very, very well. So very, she's a very smooth driver, so she would be a very good chauffeur, actually. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, I could also work from here, you know, when we're driving to the next um, uh, driving event or something. Yeah, that would be definitely something. So... Also, best marks here from the chauffeur driving experience for this vehicle. There's now one thing missing, and that is the price discussion. So what about the pricing? As it stands here right now in the long wheelbase version, 120,000 euros as a German price, 115,000 euros for the short wheelbase version. And if you then think about, first of all, Bentley, yeah, it has some resemblance with the Bentley. Genesis design has always been that way. So you get this one aged for less than half a price than for a Bentley. And why not? Actually, even if money would not play a role, I would probably get this one because the Bentley does not deliver you more, actually. I really don't find anything what the Bentley would be delivering more, except for just costing double the price. And then, even more interesting, Audi, BMW, Mercedes. So, when we recently had our comparison, BMW 7 Series versus Mercedes S-Class, the 7 Series, not super high spec, was like 136,000, maybe with an executive package, then 145,000 euros or something like that. It's then, yeah, some 20, 25,000 euros more expensive than this one, because this one already comes fully packed, which is also easy for the configuration for the customer. And then if you compare the S-Class, yeah, it was a plug-in hybrid that was like something 180,000 euros. Make a comparable engine, then maybe 175. Then this one here is some 50,000 euros less expensive than the Mercedes S-Class. Wow. And then I checked all the you know, facts and figures and the driving experience and so on. And the luxury experience is more or less the same. Where can it not keep up with the Germans? Maybe just from the noise insulation at very high speeds and from the driving dynamics, especially if you consider like an S-Class AMG or an Audi A8 or BMW 7 Series. So the Germans are more fun to drive. That's the thing. Everything else, user interface was even better in this one. So there were a lot of things that I even enjoyed here a little bit more or they were more straightforward. BMW definitely leading as for the materials, 
best seat comfort in the in the BMW and also the most animal friendly approach. For me, the short wheelbase version would probably be enough. Then again, if I would be chauffeured quite often, this one here, the long wheelbase version, is definitely the way to go. If you consider here price performance ratio, this is actually at this moment the best luxury vehicle to buy from the price performance aspect. And if you want to see more, check out the BMW versus S-Class, BMW 7 Series versus Mercedes S-Class, and of course the Audi A8L.